Question number four. Uh, figure three point one shows the distribution of blood groups in the population of a country. Percentage population with each blood group. So percentage, and these are the four blood groups: A, B, A, B, and O. Even if you have uh, the positive and the negative, there will only be eight blood groups: A negative, A positive, B negative, B positive, A B positive, A B negative, and O positive, O negative. So there are only four categories in this question. state the type of variation shown as discontinuous why is it discontinuous because there are only four categories and give a reason for your answer why because four distinct categories there are no intermediates like we say okay continuous variation is the height of 16 year old boys well it's not just two categories or three we don't say there are only 5 feet 5 5 and 5 8 we say there are different categories some are 5 5 1 5 2 5 4 5 7 5 8 6 6 1 So there are many, many intermediates. Some, some of you don't understand it. Some of you don't understand the English. Some of you are unable to put it into words. So basically, these are the words that you have to use. Even if you don't know the word, then you need to learn these words. So four distinct categories. There are no intermediates. The no intermediates means there is nothing in between. Like height has many intermediates. Sixteen-year-old boys can be many, many different heights. height of 16 year old boys it could be different in pakistan could be different in india could be different in china then coming to the part 3 the population of this country is approximately 63 million people use the information in figure 3.1 to calculate the approximate number of people in the country that have blood group b now you can see blood group b blood group b is here and it is 10% So you have to calculate the 10% of 63 million, which is 6.33 million, or you could have said 63 lakhs. And I'm not very good at these million trillion story, and I don't really know many of the the zeros, how many zeros in a million. But of course, over a period of time, I've had to learn it. But it's very very confusing. I agree with you totally. Uh, coming to the B part of the question. 
Table 3.1 shows the distribution of blood groups in the population of four countries. Country S, T, U, V, percentage population with each blood group. You know the total has to be 100. So if you add 26 plus 18 plus 52, it comes to 96. So 100 minus 96 is 4. So that's why you put a 4 here. It says calculate the percentage in the population of the uh, country U that has blood group A, B. Blood group A, B. There was something which they left out. Write your answer in the space provided in table 3.1. Suggest why the percentage of population with each blood group varies between the countries listed. Blood group is because of alleles. If I'm blood group O, I'm I, O, I, O. Two alleles. If I'm blood group A, B, I'm I, A, I, B. And this is the alleles that we have given these letters, which is called genotype. Each person has two alleles from, for blood group. Different frequency in different populations. If we have more people with blood group A, then their children will also be more with blood group A. So inbreeding of separate groups. If there are certain people on an island and they're all blood group A or blood group uh, O, then of course there will only be O or A, there won't be any Bs because if there's nobody with a blood group B. So inbreeding, or that means it's just the people there who are uh, resulting in the future, the reproduction, and there are not many different variations in their people. So just why it might be necessary to know a person's blood group. I might want to know it because if I'm having surgery and I have to get blood, so I would have to know my blood group because... How is the surgeon going to give me a blood transfusion? Then I have to know the blood group when I am having a kidney transplant. God forbid somebody needs a kidney transplant, but he has to know the blood group. And he has to do a tissue match. And of course, this is to prevent rejection of transplanted organs. Then to, to check the paternity, sometimes a child might have been lost and somebody might say, oh, well, this is not the real child, this is an adopted child. Then, of course, we would need to do the paternity testing. We'd have to see the blood group, check whether the blood group is the same or not. If the parents are both O group, then child cannot be B group or A group or even AB. A child's mother has blood group AB and the child's father O. So we've got AB and O. So O has to be IOIO. AB has to be IAIB. Now, what are the possible which the child can be? He can be AO, which is blood group A. He can be AO, which is again blood group A. Can be BO, so blood group B, and can be BO, so blood group B. So the only blood group possible is A and B, and the only possibility is IA, IO, and IBIO. So you have to circle this and you got the answer. Now coming to question number five, the dominant allele for the ability to smell the scent of a particular flower is represented by A. So they've given this to you in the question. The recessive allele. So the recessive allele which does not allow a person to smell the scent. So the person who does not smell the scent is small a, small a. And the person who can smell the scent is either big A, big A or big A, small a. Using these letters indicate each of the following. The genotype. Genotype means the genetic makeup, which is always uh, shown by the letters, who is unable to smell the flowers. So that had to be small a, small a. The possible alleles found in the gametes of a woman who can smell the flower. You see, if she is big A, big A, then it will be big A and big A. But if she is big A, small a, then the gametes can have this A and then this A. So understand is that the dominant people can be two different types, either homozygous dominant, which is this one, or heterozygous. Both will, of course, have the dominant trait. So the ability to smell the scent, which was the dominant trait. So always read the question carefully and see what is the dominant trait and what is the recessive trait. Then it says figure 4.1 represents some alleles on part of the sex chromosome of a woman and a man. So this was the woman, this was the man. Now you can see these both are the same length. This one is also the same length. But this one is longer and this one is shorter. So it says in the space below, draw these alleles as they might appear in a sperm cell that carries the Y chromosome. 
So the Y chromosome will only be one of each. So this will only be this one because it is one of each pair. The sperms are of two types. Either they carry the X chromosome, which is this one, or they carry the Y chromosome, which is the shorter one. So allele B, and then they have shown you this another allele. You could have drawn this shaded. You could have drawn this uh, either way because you see crossing over can take place. But that's of something we to study in A-levels. But of course, to be on the safe side, I would have drawn it uh, without any. I wouldn't have shaded it because this was what was given here. This was this one, this part which you had to draw. This one here, this part. Right? So this was for two marks. That C part figure 4.2 shows how the alleles on one of the chromosomes might appear in a cell taken from somewhere else in the man's body. Allele B shows a mutation. And this was what they had to show you. That shows some sort of a mutation. There's a slight change in it. So just two possible causes of the mutation. Either they could be UV light, UV radiation, you could have said any radiation, gamma radiation, alpha radiation, or it could have been some chemicals like tar or mustard gas or even benzene. So these are the different chemicals which could have, again, a syllabus point. Then it says mutated alleles such as those shown in figure 4.2 are usually, are usually recessive. Use your knowledge of genetics to explain why society discourages marriage between closely related people like cousins. So parents with normal phenotypes have no mutation. Heterozygous may carry the recessive allele because you had to, call, to have talk about the recessive thing. How can the recessive be passed on? So if somebody is heterozygous, then he has the recessive allele, but he doesn't suffer from the disease. Now, if children inherit two recessive alleles, then they may suffer from the mutational condition. So greater chance if closely related people are heterozygous. So 25% chance of having a homozygous recessive. So if both the cousins are big A, small A, so they have a 25% chance of having a child with this mutational disease. Because usually it is the recessive trait which gives them the mutational disease. Now this was given in the question. Sometimes certain diseases are caused by the dominant trait. So that means the people who are sufferers are either this or this. And these are the people who are normal. This is also a question which has come in one of your papers. So it's not necessarily that all recessive conditions are uh, disease causing. Some even dominant traits are disease causing. So do not, but then in the question they had said this. They had said mutated alleles such as that shown in are usually recessive. So another very important point is read the question and sort of get your answer from the question. What are they asking you? And coming to question two, which is an essay question uh, with reference to the inheritance of blood groups, explain what is meant by each of the following terms. The first one was dominance. The first dominance is an allele. You see allele we say is an alternative form of a gene. So alleles, alternative form of a gene, like I have four colored markers, green, blue, black, and red. So I have four different colored markers. So allele for blood groups are three actually. So alleles, they're responsible for a trait or a characteristics, and only one needs to be present. If we say it's a dominant condition, then we say only one needs to be present. This will also show the effect, and this will also show the effect for the trait to be expressed. So I, A, I, B are dominant to I, O. This is of course in relation to the blood group story. I, A, because we have three alleles, so I, A and I, B are dominant to I, O because I said three alleles. Then it says the next heading was, the next heading was co-dominance. In co-dominance, first of all, there are two alleles. Both are equally dominant. Like if you mix red paint and white paint, you get a pink shade. So if you cross red flowers with white flowers, you probably get pink flowers. Or you cross a black rabbit with a white rabbit and you get a gray rabbit. So there will be three, three phenotypes. So two alleles, both are equally dominant, both have an effect and this would show their effect in the heterozygous condition. And in the example is IA, IB. And the blood group would be AB showing the A effect as well as the B effect.
we didn't say a b is a group or b a b is b group we said a b is a b i a i b is blood group a b but the question is how are you going to write it this is the main thing is that your writing skills have to be very good in prepper 2 then the part b of the question explain the difference between the number of chromosomes in a gamete and in a body cell gamete means if it's a male in the sperm and if it's a female in the ovum and any body cell from the skin or from the stomach or from the liver or from the kidney or from the brain so the gamete will always have half the number of chromosomes so gamete will have half the number of chromosomes haploid one of each pair 46 versus 23 if you talk of the human cells gametes formed after meiosis or if you didn't remember this word meiosis you could have easily said reduction division body cells are produced by mitosis and the diploid number is restored at fertilization the diploid number is restored at fertilization 23 in the sperm 23 in the ovum zygote has 46 chromosomes so the diploid number is restored at fertilization and each parent has an equal share in the genotype of the offspring because in the genetic makeup one of each you are getting from your mother and one from your father so this is what we have to say about each parent has an equal share in the genotype of the offspring so this was the answer to this please understand this chapter and i hope i am able to do a few more uh, videos by tomorrow and then uh, you can improve your skills of this chapter, I hope so. Thank you very much for watching and thank you once again.